Hi, Dan. Hi. How are you? Good. You sound exactly like the guy I just spoke to a second ago on the phone. Oh, right. Okay. I'm better looking, though. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> um, well, um, congratulations um, on, a, well, certainly um, South Africa's first uh, first release of, of Hoobastank. Thank you. How does it feel to have an album released so far down south in Africa? Uh, it feels great. You know, I, I, I haven't really thought about it too much, but um, uh, now that now that you mention it, it, it feels really good. Yeah, yeah. And um, this has been, uh, I'm sure, for the band, um, not a long time coming, but but a moment that obviously when when you start a band, it's what every every band hopes for is that you can get as many people in as many places to hear your music. Um, is, yeah. it, is it is it is it good to to know that? The music that you make translates, um, you know, in so many places. I mean, you you just had the album released in Europe as well, and in the UK. Um, yeah, yeah. I didn't even really think about like the fact that uh, the fact that like it could be released in other countries and stuff. You know, and it's just it's just really cool. Yeah, because I, I mean, always, I always just pictured it. I always just pictured it as being released like in in the US, mm -hmm. but it's really cool that it's in other places. Sure. I mean, that's the beauty of the U.S., isn't it? I mean, you could pretty much spend the rest of your life, you know, touring up and down the, the east and west coast and throughout America. And uh, for a lot of bands, that's actually, you know, um, that would keep you busy enough, wouldn't it? Right. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. now that you've got, um, obviously, now that you've got an international release, uh, you know, releases in different territories, um, what is the plan now? Um, are you going to be replicating what you you know what you've done in America? Um, I hope you know we're going uh, back to Europe. Which I mean, we 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 were in Europe once, and we're going back. And I hope you know we we can go to other countries, and that'd be really cool. And I hope that we can do as well there as we're doing here. You know, knock on wood. I hope that we continue to do it even better here. Mm. You know? mm -hmm. Because I mean, it, in a way, it must be quite difficult I suppose to talk about you know the music that you you write and play because it comes from a different place in the sense that you you play it in order to get people to you know to be you know to show their emotions and to and, and to be hyped by the music and then as you like right. I'm doing now I'm sort of dissecting it probably yeah, in some cases for the first time is it is, is it something that uh, you know, obviously, you want to get up on a stage, you want to play to people and have the music translate. Right. Mm. That's all I want to do. Mm -hmm. But, um, as I say, it's, it's, it didn't happen overnight for you. It, it's something that, um, I mean, you, you know, this isn't your debut album. You, you have worked in one of the hardest cities, I think, as far as music is concerned. Um, you know, was, was there ever a time that you thought that, uh, you know that it perhaps wasn't going to wasn't going to happen for you. Um, yeah, there was. I remember. You know, I remember times like sitting where I'm going. I've been doing the, the same thing for five years, going to work every day, going to band practice every day, and and you know nothing's changing. I mean, we were playing shows in Los Angeles that were really good, but that didn't matter because um, nothing was coming out. It was like not. It wasn't going anywhere. It was mm. like, it had only gone so far, and that we, we were just doing nothing at this point. Mm -hmm. And and what changed all of that? Uh, I think we all started to focus on what we really wanted and uh, started writing better songs. Mm -hmm. Was that on on the advice of you know of people, or was it pretty much just a, a, a band a band decision? Um, it was just a band decision. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure, I mean, I've spent uh, I've spent some time in LA as well um, with bands, and uh, there are a lot of bands. There, there are a lot of great bands, a, a lot of bands who who don't get that break to be able to, you know, have their music played on the radio or you know get to make the videos and, and tour. Um, and it doesn't mean to say that they're any lesser, you know, any any worse or you know, I mean, they're as good as a lot of the bands who right. are signed. Um, and I think for a lot of bands that must be a huge frustration when you turn on the radio and you hear K-Rock playing stuff and you're going, but our stuff is a hundred times better than that. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, as you say, I mean, was it, you know, did, did you get to a point that you were almost insistent that this couldn't only be it, that they, you know, that your music deserved to be played on, you know, on more stations and in, in many places? Um, wait, say that? What is the question? I'm saying, did you did you ever get to a point that you were almost pissed off with the industry, sort of going, well, yeah, this industry is so bureaucratic. Oh, and yeah, it for works, sure. Yeah, it works like a big business, doesn't it? Obviously, it's like a giant yeah, bank. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we got, we got pissed off with the industry all the time. We just thought it was lame. I mean, it still can be lame. Mm-hmm. And then if you're not doing if if you're not doing well, mm. then it's lame. You know, if uh, if you're not the hot thing, then mm. you can be lame. Do Do you feel a pressure now, in a way, because you you know you you've got a major record company um, who's you know certainly working you probably harder than you've you know not harder than you've ever worked, but. Yeah, you have high expectations of this album based on what it's done so far in America. Do you feel that pressure? Um, not too much. Mm. I don't really feel the pressure, you know. Um, no, yeah, I don't. I don't. Mm. But I mean, that probably comes from the fact that you're confident in the songs because you've written a really, you know, a phenomenal album that, you know, that that has has a lot to offer. Yeah. Um, I just don't think about it that much, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't think about. It. I just get out there and play every day. I mean, we just we travel and we play shows, and, mm. and that that that's pretty much all I think about. Mm-hmm. But is it is it easier for you now to focus perhaps a little more on the music um, and not worry about the you know the day to day bits and pieces that you had to worry about as a band, you know, setting up your own gigs, doing gigs in LA. Um, and playing around and and that kind of thing. Now that you've got, yeah, you know, you've got a focused group of people who are, are helping you on all of those levels, so that you can do a better live show, you know, and deliver a better performance. Yeah, I mean, it's easier just to. I, I don't have to think about all those all those things. I mean, we have a record deal and we have people taking care of us, and it's, it's just to weight lifted off of our shoulders, you know. Mm. Mm. Because I mean, I think every band strives to get that major record deal, um, and when yeah. they and when they get it, I think a lot of the time, if they if they're a bit green, they, you know, they assume that it's going to be different. Uh, did w- were you prepared, you know, that it, you you sign at the bottom of the of the contract and you think everything's going to be okay now, but you've got to work probably twice as hard now, don't you? Uh, yeah, you do. I mean, you're an unsigned band and you climb up the you start at the bottom of the ladder, mm. you climb up to the top, and you get to the top and you get your record deal. Mm. And then right when you get your record deal, you go all the way back down to the bottom of the ladder. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, I've, I've got sales figures here in the States, well, I've certainly from, you know, that I've picked up that the album has sold over half a million in the US. I mean, that's, that's a phenomenal sort of number as well, I think. Uh, it, it's, it, it must it must feel good. I mean, did, was there a point that you sort of sat together and said, "Okay, we're now, you know, this is it. This is our big break, and now we have to, you know, now we have to go out and make this thing happen." Uh, no. I mean, we're just we're just sitting here crossing our fingers. We're we're just along for the ride. We're hoping it happens. You know, we're. Uh, it's, it's, I almost feel like it's not up to us. We're not in control. We've already done our part. We 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 wrote the songs. We put out the record. I mean, we still can you know, uh, get out there and tour and show people what we're all about, which is very important, and that's what we're doing. But um, it's up to people to uh, listen to the radio and hear the songs and like the music and go buy the record, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. And, and playing in, in different countries now, I mean, uh, you're going back to, back to the UK, back to Europe. Um, is, it, is it fun to play to, to new audiences and, 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 and see what their reactions are like? Yeah, it definitely is. It's cool. You know, we, we've We've toured through the U.S. you know a couple of times, a few times, you know, mm. and since uh, since September, and um, it's definitely cool going to other countries and, and, and seeing how people react. Mm-hmm. Are you are you surprised at, at how at, at how well it translates? You know, when you get to uh, get to a new country and you you know you set up and you play to these people and you go, wow, you know that they they they're right where you you know right where you're at. Um, I'm not really that surprised just because of what I've heard about. People other countries mm. I've heard that, that 
you know, like how how, how they are with, with music. And, and so I just kind of, ex- you know, I almost expect it. I mean, I, I think it's awesome. You know, I think it's cool. I think that playing in other countries sometimes can be better than playing in the U.S. Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. I'm not saying I'm, I'm not saying I'm, I expect it because our music is so good. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it didn't surprise me because I have friends that are, that, that have toured in other countries and they have told me what it's like, so I kind of knew what to expect. Mm, mm, mm. And uh, and who who are the who are the hardest crowds to play for? Do you, you think um, you know uh, crowds at home or, or uh, you know overseas? Um, our shows. I mean, it just depends. Each show is different. You know, mm. Los Angeles crowds can be just as good as a Portugal crowd. But I remember playing in Portugal, and that was just amazing. I remember playing in, in Paris. Mm. That was great. Um, uh, Doug, what was another really good show in Europe? Mm. What other country? Okay. Madrid, Spain was great. Okay, okay, okay. And and do do you find that uh, yeah that guys are you know coming to the show know the songs and are you know um, are literally singing them word for word in front of you? Yeah, well in 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 the U.S. for sure, and mm. then in Europe. And in the UK, we did see people doing that, and it was really cool. Mm, mm, mm. It must be quite inspiring as well. I mean, I'm sure at this point you probably already have your, you know, your sights set on, you know, on that next album. Are you are you writing while you're on the, you know, while you're out there? Um, no, we haven't really started writing. We have some parts here and there, but we don't really have the equipment to start writing and recording. I mean, we have we have guitars, but sure. Yeah, because it's always a good place to. I mean, you, you're playing probably a, a broad spectrum of stuff, not only uh, stuff on you know on on the, on the new album. Um, are, are you going back through your catalogue w- when you play live? Um, you mean our old stuff? Yes. Yeah. No, we don't play any of our old stuff right now. Nothing at all. Okay, okay, okay. And. Uh, so from here you are you're off to do some festivals in June. Yeah, we're heading to uh, back to the UK. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do some festivals um, and then go to Europe. Okay, and 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 as a band, do do you know, do your musical tastes differ hugely, or do you you guys tend to sort of be inspired by the same kind of music? Well, and the, the music that we play. Yeah. Uh, originally was inspired by by the same band. Mm-hmm. We were all influenced by the same band, but mm-hmm. now we all listen to different things. We all listen to the same things, and we all listen to different things. Mm-hmm. Do, do you make it your business when you go to a country to sort of find out what's hot in in those countries and sort of pick up some of some of their their tunes and take them back with you? Um, no, no. <laughs> you just buy a couple of t-shirts. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I haven't really been too into music recently. Like, like the last few months, I just have not been. I've been listening to a lot of older stuff, like right. stuff that I grew up listening to. You know, right? Like I, I, uh, I mean, I, the last CD I bought, I bought Alice in Chains' Dirt. You know, and I yeah. bought that before the lead singer died. I bought yeah, it, you know, a month or two ago. Mm, mm, yeah, that. But, um, I, I, I've been listening to things that are older, like things that I grew up listening to. Is is that because? Perhaps you know, from the point of view that there, there is so much going on, you know, you there's so much music happening that you're looking to sort of, you know, separate perhaps and to some extent yourself from that, just to keep it, you know, to keep it pure. Um, no, I'm just just have not been that interested in music. You mm, know? Mm. Just, I've been playing it every single day. I haven't really been interested in listening to it. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, uh, you 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 mentioning the yeah the. Um, uh, yeah, Alice in Chains. I mean, that uh, certainly was a bit of a shock. Yeah, you know, I think across the world um, when that happened, um, I think that must affect every band in a way that you sort of. Um, yeah, d- have you guys been speaking about that at all? Um, well, I mean, it's definitely sad that that happened. It doesn't surprise me at all, just because. I mean, as long as I've been into my band, I've known that the guy's been like into drugs. Yeah. You know, so I'm assuming that's what he died from. Sure. Show, I haven't sure. really heard. But um, it's sad. It's definitely sad. But I mean, we're smart enough to stay away from that shit. You know, mm. we, don't, we don't do any of that. Mm. I mean, look at it, look at everybody that's killed. You know, mm. I mean, you, you got to stay away from that crowd. Mm-hmm. And I think, uh, if anything, um, it, it it does show that it is a it is a hard industry. Not hard, and I mean, it's hard to be in a band. But it's a 
it's a it's an industry that's filled with a lot of uh, you know with a lot of stuff that can get in the way of the music as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, as I say, Dan, thank you uh, for your time. I, I wish you all the very best. I hope that we can get you down to South Africa at some point so that you can play your music. That'd be good, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. But good luck with it. I don't think you you need any luck at this point because you've got a great album. Thank you very much. And uh, so all the very best in Europe. And as I say, hopefully we can get you down here at some point. You have a good day. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be down someday. Great, thank you. All right, man, thanks. Thanks. Take care, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.